Understanding the Local Control and Accountability Plan. Part 3, The Anatomy of an LCAP. So you've heard about the LCAP. You've even seen one, but you aren't sure what it is. Every school district and charter school in California must have an LCAP that follows a specific outline and includes certain information. But that probably doesn't help you understand the LCAP any better. So let's take a deeper look. The LCAP is divided into five parts, which help you, the public, understand what's planned, how funds are being used, and what kind of progress has been made. Don't be intimidated by the length of an LCAP. By thinking of it as chapters in a book, it's much less overwhelming. Let's start with the annual update. The purpose of this section is to study what happened in the prior year and to use that information to make improvements to the plan. The annual update starts with the district's goals and for each goal, the state and local priorities being addressed are shown. Next, you see the things being measured. The left side shows the targets we were aiming for and the right side shows what was achieved. These targets could be for test scores, survey responses, attendance rates, or a variety of other measures. The next part details the actions or services that were planned and the money that was budgeted. On the right side, you see what actually happened during the year and the estimated amount that was spent. It's an estimate because the annual update is completed before the entire school year is over and all the expenditures are made. Finally, after all of the actions and services for a goal, there's an analysis section. This is an important part of the annual update because it gives the reader an idea of how well things worked and what the district plans to change for the next year. The next section of the LCAP describes stakeholder engagement. Districts identify their own stakeholders, but they must include parents and guardians, students, teachers, other staff, and employee bargaining groups. A district must include those who represent English learners, foster youth, low-income, and homeless youth as stakeholders. This section of the LCAP describes how people were involved and how their input was used in making changes to the plan. The main section of the LCAP tells what the district plans to do for three years. It has one section for each goal a district is working on. For each goal, the state priorities are shown and a short explanation of why the goal is important is provided. Further down the page, the measurable outcomes are shown along with the baseline data and targets for the next three years. These are set by the district and approved by the school board. After that comes the list of actions and services a district is planning. Before each action or service are a few lines that describe the students intended to be served, the schools that might be involved, and whether it will be for whole schools or the whole district. This is important because some actions may be limited to a particular group of students, while others may be for all students. The action or service is then described and the budget follows the description. A district may provide a lot of detail for the first year and limited or no detail for years two and three. As the plan is changed, more detail may be added. The final section of the LCAP supports the main plan and explains how, with the use of supplemental and concentration funds, a district is continuing to increase or improve services for the targeted students over what's provided for all students and over what existed in 2013. This is where a district might explain why they're using supplemental or concentration funds to serve more than just the English learners, foster and homeless youth, and low-income students in the district. It may also explain how the use of those funds will help those targeted students, and it might include research that shows how an action is shown to have a positive benefit for a group of students. The drawback of an LCAP for most school districts is that they're very long. In 2017, California added a plan summary that starts the LCAP. This is where a district can provide highlights of its plan without getting into a lot of detail. For readers who aren't sure where to start, the plan summary is a good choice. It helps the reader understand what kind of progress a district is making. 
Regardless of the length of the LCAP, readers should be able to get a general idea of how a district is using its resources to support all students, and especially those in the targeted groups, by reading the plan summary. To learn more about San Juan's LCAP, please visit www.sanjuan.edu slash LCAP.